were baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slaves or free, and have been, all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Let's stop right there and just, I want to talk, mention that verse real quick. So what it's, you know, uh, what it's saying is, and we'll just kind of look at you, you know, the hand can't say to the foot, get on the camera there, you know, just because it's not the same part of the same, it's just because it's not the same part of the body doesn't mean it's still not part of the body, you know, and the value of the hand is not necessarily greater than the value of the foot, nor is the value of the foot more than the value of the hand. And, uh, you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm really, I'm beating myself up as I'm saying some of this stuff because I think sometimes uh, people in ministry, and when I say that, I really mean myself for sure, and I think other people can have this thought process is like the church, the American church or the non-recovery ministry church is like weak or, you know, they're not the one true gospel. They're not hearing the whole gospel. They're not, you know, they're not receiving the real Jesus. We are. And I think that, uh, God, I feel like I got to repent or something because I can't tell you how many messages I've preached about how, how freaking jacked up the church is. You know what I mean? And even if it is true, you know, what I'm not doing is bringing unity. You know what I mean? What I'm actually doing is increasing division. You know, and it is, you know, it, it is kind of hard when you think about it. Like, how, how do you create division or unity when there's so much to be divided about, right? I mean, we, we mentioned deno denominations. I mean, dear Lord, there's more denominations than there are people on this planet, it seems like. You know what I mean? And uh, I don't know. I'm going to read a little bit more Let's uh, while I'm reading. Just kind of brainstorm and get throw some ideas out there because uh, I think this is... Uh, this is good stuff. Okay, so I'm going to start to pick back up on uh, verse 16. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And on our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, and there should be no schism. That word schism is division. It's a word for division. So there should be no division in the body, but that, that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And we'll stop, we'll stop there. Um... Let me get some ideas. What do you think we could do as a uh, ministry or as a body to unite with other members of the body in the regions that we're in? Go ahead, Jacob. Well, I know we had uh, 
church connections going on like in their folders you actually have a piece of paper so i mean if y'all do run into anybody out there on your tables that has starts nine times out of ten they want us to come do testimonials to share mm-hmm. the word what god's done in our lives so that way it can put a new perspective in other people's lives who are fearful of allowing addicts to be in their church to see what god can do and you know actually i guess make the physical manifestation of your faith increase because you've seen what god's done in someone else's life who lived in darkness for so long so allowing us to come share a testimony, I guess, would be. Yeah. Connecting, uh, doing the, the, the Christ, the, the church connections. Um, I don't know if that's still going on very much here. Um, but, yeah, uh, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a good thing that we can do uh, to connect with the body of Christ is to let, to invite, or see, if, you know, reach out to them, kind of like what uh, Shannon and... Jacob are saying, right? Reach out to them. Try to set up testimonials, you know, and, and do it for the purpose of reaching out and connecting, not just get the love offering. You know what I mean? Have the right heart with it, not just get the love offering or um, use, want to use them, uh, you know, have them connect with us so that we're a referral source. Yeah, we want those things too. But if, if it's all just about that, you know, I don't know anymore, you know, because I mean, that, I, they, they, it used to just be really big on my heart to connect with churches for that purpose. And even though we did connect with churches through that, there was no, there wasn't necessarily much of a relationship. Not that I was just reaching out and saying, hey, when are you going to send us a love offering? Never do that. But, <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it, it seems it seems to be an, uh, something that I've noticed is if if they're not sending the the monthly support or they're not sending students, that those relationships always end up kind of withering away for whatever reason, you know. But that's what I seem to notice. Um, anybody got any other ideas? Say you're connected with the church. Let's 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 say not not just like. Uh, not just in the example of you know connecting with a church uh, like that, but you have a ch- home, uh, like your home church. How to stay connected with a home church? How to keep the enemy from causing division with your home church? Got any ideas? One of the the big big one, maybe even the biggest one, is uh, communication. You know. Whoever, you know, you have assigned to it, they need to be in, con- in, in pretty much fairly constant communication with the pastors of your church. That way, if, if an issue does come up, you know, they can say, yeah, they already made me aware of it, and la di da di da you know, this is, the, this is the deal, this is the, they're handling it, you know, whatever, you know, instead of... Uh, not communicating and not not um, addressing an issue, and I mean when I and when I talk about issues, I mean there ain't too many that I haven't been involved with, you know. Um, I mean I've had uh, we've had like a guy in the program was trying to talk to a woman in the church, you know, and vice versa uh, in other facilities where. They were passing notes like children, you know what I mean? And there was even a member of the church helping pass the notes, you know. Uh, you know, you just, you know, there, there's been a lot of, a lot of things. And, uh, you know, we've had uh, people... Uh, basically verbally assault us, telling us that, um, you know, that we're mean and, you know, we're all about the money, you know, and all these different things, right? And if you don't have the support of the, the head of the, that church for them to know what's really going on, it, that that relationship will go. You know, that relationship will totally go. Uh, so yeah, communication is the number is is probably the number one thing. Has anybody got any other any other thoughts? 
Well, in, uh, on the other end, it's not just inviting them, or not inviting, not getting them to invite us to their church, invite them to come here, you know? Invite them to come preach and see what it's about. That was, you know, that was key too, because then they got to walk around, they got to see how we function, how we operate, you know, what needs, what needed, what, what, um, what we were doing, you know, the living conditions, you know what I mean? Living conditions are important. You know, I, I was in a, another recovery ministry, not, not, a, not a life changers one, but, uh, <clears throat> the walls were infested with black mold. And when I say infested, I'm talking, you could bleach those walls next morning. It was coming back through. It didn't matter what you did. The only way to fix that is to tear the walls down and redo everything, right? But, uh, you know, I remember, I remember every single time a, a parent, like, would bring their kid into the program, and they'd be like, you know, we want to see the facilities, and I just cringe every time. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, did they bleach the walls today? <laughs> you know? Because it's embarrassing. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, if, if you have everything up to par, you know what I mean? If you've got everything up to par and you're, the people that you're connecting and you're inviting over, um, they come and they see that, they can always relay that back to them like, hey, I've been there. I've seen the place. What you're hearing isn't true. You know? Especially, especially if a member of this church has one of their people in our program. I mean, I'm telling you what, it, it, it is borderline a nightmare to the point where I almost don't want to accept people anymore, when it, those, those types of people anymore. I'd rather tell them to go to another ministry just because um, it's, it's unreal the amount of times they will call home and the person that's supposed to be monitoring their phone calls ain't doing a good job of it and they get on there and they start bad mouthing the ministry and they start saying all kinds of crazy stuff that ain't true and um, then they say that to their parents and then their parents go to the pastor or, or whoever and then they go to you know or they you know they come to us or they come to a leader and they start you know saying hey this this and this and this and this you know, my angel, especially if they think their angel can do no wrong, you know, even though, you know, their angel's court ordered or something, you know, and, uh, and, uh, it, it, I mean, it can cause serious, serious problems. Matter of fact, I'll share this story, uh, without using any names because none, so none of y'all know, but uh, we had a, uh, a child of one of our uh, pastors of another center at a church at another center and uh, I had to kick him out because uh, he did something that was really weird and he was a minor and if he was an adult, not that I would have let him get away with it, but he would have got some discipline. But because he was a minor, I was like, you got to go. <laughs> and uh, they've actually tried, uh, tried several times with this kid. We tried several times with this kid. But uh, it ended up being that the pastor got offended and uh, not just quit, uh, quit the ministry, but quit working at the church that she was pastoring at. And uh, we've actually had several different pastors that worked here that, because their kid was involved and did something ridiculous and ended up uh, blaming us for it. So it almost, to me, it's just, it's just one of the, you know, it seems like it's unavoidable, but at the same time, uh, heck, even, uh, even Apostle Mark's nephew that was here He's getting crap from his sister or his brother or his family because he said a bunch of crazy stuff. 
and he's getting it. So, you know, it might not be a bad, a bad policy if somebody's a member of the church or whatever, or a family member or whatever like that, that it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and let them point them in another recovery ministry, although I know we're all about intakes, you know, and I'm not trying to say that uh, we shouldn't give it a try, but it might not be a bad idea to start considering something else. Especially if it's gonna, if it could damage the relationship with the church, especially the home church. Yes, where's the mic? Um, <clears throat> you just reminded me too, like when something like that happens and it damages our reputation, that's sometimes hard to recover from that. And it can be damaging all the way around, not just financially or um, just like, you know, being low in numbers, which that hurts us all the way around. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like sometimes um, reputation, you know, having that person close or that person that's going online and saying these things about us, sometimes reputation can be hard to recover from. Yeah. No doubt. It actually reminded me of a verse. I wanted to read it. Let me find it real quick. I'll just read the verse. If you want to write it down, you can. It is uh, It's Romans 12, verse 18. It says, If possible, so, as, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. You know, we want to... We want to have a good reputation. We want to live peaceably. We want to have a good rep reputation with um, with other members of the body of Christ. That's I think that's something that we got to try to keep in mind that whether they have doctrinal differences or whether whether or not they do, they are members of the same body. You know, um, so many times. Uh, I feel like, and, and, I'm, and I'm really talking about myself at, le at least 80% of the time about this. So many times, though, that we get this idea of like, oh, they, like I said, oh, they don't understand what it's like. And it's true, they probably don't. And um, uh, we, we, we look at it as like, oh, they don't understand, so s screw them. We may not say it this way, but this is what we think. Screw them, and we're going to do it our way anyways. And that's not always, you know, that's not always a bad thing, but it can be. Or sometimes we, we may need to just explain to them, you know, hey, this is why this is this way. You know, just like when you get a new intake, you've got to explain certain rules, you know. You mean I have to have somebody take me to the bathroom? Yeah. Because we've had people in the past that have had drugs on them that we didn't find in the search, and they went to the bathroom and shot up. And we don't want somebody to OD and die on us that, first, that just got here, you know. You know, something as simple as that, something simple as that could save a whole relationship and being like, you don't, you don't understand, you're ignorant, Right? Are you even saved? Do you know Jesus? And Bible thump them or something, you know? You know, Hebrews 13, 17 says that they've got to obey the governing authorities, which is me. And if you don't like it, you can go sit on the other pew. You know? Now, it could be something that's like, you know, you have to take a stand and you're like, look, there's, this is the rule, and you have to accept it, you know, but you still got to have some type of, you know, respect in the way that you do it, right? Even um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Uh, they had to take a stand against King Nebuchadnezzar, and they, but they still did it in a respectful way, you know? And if we do that, if we, if we deal with situations like that in a respectful way, God will have our back just like He had theirs. And I have had this happen before too. Uh, we had a guy who uh, 
dude was destructive. As a matter of fact, he broke a window down, or broke like a glass window door. Well, I don't know what you would call it, but like the glass door. He broke one at the old center, excuse me, at the old center. And uh, they kicked him out, let him come back two weeks, and they sent him to, the other, to another facility. And at that facility, he um, kept acting up. He'd leave the program, come back, leave the program, take somebody with him, but then he would come back. I mean, it happened a bunch of times. Well, eventually, that got, he got cut off from that and wasn't allowed to come back. And uh, one of the members of the home church um, took him in and let him live with him. And, uh, you know, we went to the pastor, of course, and we said that wasn't wise, that wasn't a good move or whatever. And, uh, you know, they, you know, this family was just like, you know, whatever, right? And they did it anyways. And then, I don't know, he was there for like a month, and then they caught him stealing their stuff. And uh, if, uh, and then, you know what, afterwards he came up to me and he's like, I didn't understand, but I do now. You know, once, once that happened, then it was like, I didn't understand, but I do now. But I'll tell you what, very rarely does that happen. It's, you know what I mean? But here, Brother John Stage had something to say. I'm going to, oh no, I'm giving him the mic. I don't want to say that Brother Howard on the mic. You don't have to say his name. Well, it's too late now. But... Too late now. Oh, good. <laughs> Be transparent. That's, that's really what this is all about. It's about being transparent. You know, and if you can be transparent and be above reproach all at the same time, you know, you should be good. Now, some things are unavoidable. Some people uh, will, it won't matter. You know, like I said, my angel can do no wrong, even if my angel's court ordered. You know what I mean? Sometimes it won't matter, and it is what it is. You can't, can't do anything about it. But... Um, you got to try. And I feel like sometimes we don't try. We're just like, well, you know, screw you. You know, and I, I, I don't think that that's going to bring the unity for the body. You know, now I know that sometimes the scriptures do talk about like uh, people who can't agree, they do separate. But if, if, if you read like in the story of where Paul and Barnabas, they, they disagreed over John Mark and they split up. Uh, but later on, you hear Paul saying, hey, you know what? John Mark, he is profitable for ministry. And I think that's, uh, I think that's, that's a thing that we got to understand is that everybody's profitable for ministry, whether it be recovery ministry or, you know, scrubbing toilets ministry or whatever, you know. It's all it's all profitable, especially if you're doing it for God. You know? Has anybody got a anybody got any other ideas as far as what we could do to improve relations with the body of Christ? Yeah. About the intake process, do y'all think that you know maybe more information should be given on the outset, you know, as the type of program, because I know when we're out in, in the communities, we the, the big thing is, you know, we have a recovery ministry, but it's a lot more than that. You know, it's a discipleship program, and there's a whole lot more involved than just the recovery aspect of it. You know, maybe, maybe we're not giving enough information is what I'm getting at as to the, to the structure of the program and what they're what they're fixing to face when they walk in here. Um, go ahead, Shannon. Did you want to answer that? Go ahead. Uh, no. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Well, I know for myself, I usually, if I'm out there, um, and some, I usually just tell people we're a recovery, a recovery program for people that struggle with drug and alcohol addiction. However, if they end up saying something about Jesus or whatever, then I'll usually go into more details because you get a lot of people that'll buy stuff that are not Christians and uh, 
And so as far as that goes, it just depends on who's there. Now, um, uh, I do believe that they get informed when they're doing the intake process more often than not that of what they what to what should be expected because it's usually part of the phone interview. I mean, there may be a few things in the phone interview that needs to be more detailed. I'm not sure, but um, I'm not sure on that. But. What was your question? Yeah. Right. I personally, I try to let them know. I kind of actually even go into detailed, um, like how our schedule is. I tell them that we go, we have class during the day. It's a classroom setting. Um, and then, uh, about that we fundraise on the weekends, I let them know that this is a strict program, you know, but that it's worth it and they can do it. But um, I was going to say about, like, with your question, saying how, how can we, you know, be better for the body of Christ. Somebody said this to me once, and it so stuck with me. It's so good because, and this is so true, and I take it personally now, and I always try to go by this. They said it's a lot easier to lead somebody with honey than to lead them with vinegar. And if you'll just take that and put it in your heart, like, yeah, you do have to tell them the rules and you do have to lead them, but you're also shaping and molding them into the person that God created them to be. You're helping them do what they can't maybe do for themselves. And so, but you also have to do it in a loving, gentle way as well, you know, because some people, most of us, never liked authority. I know I didn't. And so if somebody's like, rah, 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 you know, that's harder. Or if they say something, then you get offended or it hurts your feelings or something. But if you, you know, somebody can say one thing, you know, and have a tone with it. And then somebody else can say the same exact thing. And that person receive it and understand it better but because they use kinder words, you know. Or that's what I mean by leading with honey. Instead, because you literally, like, if you've got, you know, honey offering it to an animal, they're going to be more, or a person, whatever, to accept it or to come this way than, you know, offering them something that's sour or don't taste bad. And that's just the same way in our actions and how, how we talk and treat people, you know. Everybody wants to be treated with love. And so often people in addiction or abuse or things like that haven't had a lot of real love. Amen. Uh, as you were talking, it reminded me of a scripture in Revelation. I don't know the exact uh, chapter or address, but uh, uh, in the scripture, he's uh, John, the revelator, the guy who wrote Revelations, he's supposed to eat a scroll, right? And he eats the scroll and he says it, it was sweet first and then it became bitter. And with what Shannon is saying, you know, if if you if you're you know if you if you bring that honey first, you know, then you can bring the the peas, so to speak. You know what I mean? The veggies, you know, the veggies that nobody wants but needs. But give them the honey first, you know. Um. There was something else I was going to say, but I lost it. Um, anybody else got anything while I try to think about what I lost in my head? Yeah. Go ahead, Jacob. I mean, I think it goes back to <clears throat> communication. I mean, from pastors to pastors. I mean, especially running a ministry like this. Some people out there may understand a little stint of it, but they need to understand also that, when, especially when you allow students to talk to other people in the congregation, how manipulative these people, how we can be. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that's how we got what we wanted out there. And that's how we continue yeah. to try to maneuver if we're not here for the right reasons or if we find out that we're here for the right reasons. 
You know, I think that's something that it all leads back to communication is the biggest part, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. Yeah, communication, it's, it is going to be the biggest thing. Um, most definitely. Oh, I finally remember what I had to say. Um, going back to this, another thing, going back to the scripture, uh, this is why I think it's so important for us to realize just because, like the scripture says, the hand can't say to the foot or the foot can't say to the hand, I'm not part of the body because it's not a hand or a foot. You ever had those situations, and I get them almost every time, I can't, I don't almost hate these types of situations now, but like when everybody's like, let's get in a circle and hold hands and pray. I can't tell you how many times that uh, that happens, and while it happens, my nose starts itching. Yeah. <laughs> almost every time. Almost every time, and then I look like a freaking idiot holding hands going... <laughs> trying to trying to scratch my nose because I don't have my hands to do it at that moment. Now my nose is itching now. You know? And so that's I feel like that is a example of why it is important just because the members of the body aren't the same members that doesn't mean that they don't have a level of importance. You know. Um you know, even though we balance with our feet, if there's a time where it's windy or whatever, a lot of times we throw our hands up to help balance. And so we need that. All right, and that's pretty much all I got. Um, and I, you, I guess the next class is going to be uh, down there? Yes. All right, so we'll go ahead and let's take that break. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your grace, love, and mercy, Lord, and we just ask that uh, you help us as a body, not, a, not, a, not an individual body of believers, but... As, as a part of the body of Christ to learn how to grow and become closer and, 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 uh, and be a part of the full, whole body of Christ, Lord, because that's what you called us to be. We're all part of the body of Christ, whether we want to accept it or not, we, whether we want to be our own separate entity, we can't be our own separate, separate entity. Your word says so. So help us to accept that and to flow in what that is. In Jesus' name, amen.